Hi, and welcome to the Always Evolving Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elizabeth Bedrick. Relationship programming is the term I use to describe how our upbringings greatly influence the way we view ourselves, others, and the world as a whole. And as we know, trauma can play a tremendous role in our belief system, but what is less often talked about is that trauma is not only the bad things that happen to us, but also the good things that don't. Here with us today is Angelica Smith, licensed marriage and family therapist, and Angelica is here to help us to better understand the impacts of complex childhood trauma. It's okay that we don't have it all figured out. We're all just taking it a day at a time. This is Always Evolving with Dr. Liz. Angelica, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Hello. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Can you tell everybody what you do? What What is your role? What do you specialize in? And yeah, we'll yeah. obviously learn more about that as we talk about our topic. But yeah, tell us about yeah. yourself. So I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm also a certified clinical trauma professional. So I specialize in trauma and complex trauma, and I work for a private practice in Newport Beach called Haven Counseling Collective. Very cool. So the trauma piece then that we're going to be talking about is something that you are doing on a daily basis then with, with your clients. And as I had said in the intro, it being not only about these big bad things that happen, but also either the things, the good things that don't, but also these more covert experiences that we have a really hard time identifying what they are. Yes. So much of the time I'll have people come into my office and say, no, I don't really have anything from childhood. And then once we start to unpack and dig a little bit deeper, most of the time there is something there and not everyone necessarily has trauma, but everybody has wounding. We all have wounds from childhood. And so I think yeah. it's always important to unpack that and explore the impacts of it. How do you define the difference between a traumatic experience and then a wound or maybe an attachment wound? Um, yeah, yeah. So complex trauma can be defined as prolonged or repeated exposure to trauma. So I like to look at trauma as anything that's a threat to your physical or emotional safety. So it will alter your view of the world as safe. And it's going to have a really big and long lasting impact on your emotions, even your physical state. Um, whereas wounding, it's not necessarily going to become stuck in the brain like trauma is. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're more likely to be able to heal from that. It's not quite as impactful as trauma. Sure. And that complex childhood trauma gets really hard to identify and, and really hard to treat really hard to resolve because, because it is our worldview and it is our template for life. It is what we just know about how relationships work and how people treat others. It can be so insidious and really hard to see like, oh, that was actually a really damaging thing that happened to me day after day after day. Mm -hmm. How do you help your clients to start to identify that because it, it also yeah. becomes an identity piece, right? Like we want to, we have this mm. protection of our friends, our family, you know, we don't want to betray them. So how right. do you start digging into it? Right. I think a lot of that hesitation can come from not wanting to blame one's parents or not want to, um, yeah, I guess putting blame or, well, it, it, there's no point in revisiting the past. But the point of it is not to point fingers, but it is to bring this to the open so we can acknowledge it and move forward and heal from it. Um, so I think acknowledging that that's, there's purpose in this. We're not just doing this to point fingers or to place blame. And that healing comes from revisiting some of this. Right. And for somebody listening right now that has those thoughts of like, it happened in the past, just get over it. Stop blaming your parents for everything. Just suck it up and all of those things. And you're talking about that there is purpose in identifying it and purpose in talking about it. Yeah. What would that purpose be? How, mm -hmm. how, how do you define that purpose? Right. So when you think about trauma that gets stored and unprocessed, a lot of the time that will result in 
dissociation or disconnecting. So when we shove our feelings or shove our trauma aside and we don't look at it and we don't deal with it, it's going to creep up in really uncomfortable, maladaptive ways. And so the purpose of bringing this up and looking at it is to find healing, is to help your brain to process it in an adaptive way and in a healthy way so that you can heal from it. Right. I completely agree. And I think the other aspect of that is that so often it feels like this idea of what's wrong with me. Like, why can't I just have healthy relationships? Why can't I regulate my emotions when I'm upset? Like yeah. all of these things that we take on as our defectiveness. And I think yeah. that when we bring to light the impact of these early childhood experiences, there sometimes is a sense of like normalizing and taking away that label of there's something wrong with me, but yes. rather this is the thing that happened to me. And, mm -hmm. and that is where it's coming from. Do you see so that? much compassion? Yeah. Yeah. So much compassion can, can come up as things start to make sense. And when things start to make sense, you get curious about them. And with that curiosity often comes that compassion. And through the lens of work that I do, that's where so much of the healing is, is in being able to give yourself that compassion. And how do you define the difference between overt and covert trauma? When you are mm -hmm. working with your clients on you know, the CPTSD and that the complexity of that, how do you define the difference between those two types of trauma? Sure. So when I think about overt trauma, you think about maybe the more blatant or obvious examples. So ongoing physical, sexual, verbal abuse. But there are other ways trauma can show up that maybe people don't even realize has impacted them and has been traumatic for them. So the more covert experiences can be things like emotional neglect. Maybe you had a parent who had a severe mental illness or addiction, and for that reason, they just couldn't show up for you. That can have a really big impact. It can be living in a really high conflict, high stress, tension household, things like that can have a really big impact. Um, it can be having a parent with a personality disorder, a narcissistic or a borderline parent. Those things can show up in really big ways. Parents who are highly critical, that yeah. those all play a large role. And I can go into more specifics with how that can show up into adulthood as well. Um, but Things like that that are maybe more common that people don't maybe initially think are trauma can absolutely be traumatic. Yeah, more common and and um, almost easier to justify in a sense, like easier to try to explain away. And even the person experiencing the trauma learns how to justify it and explain it away. And we sit with so many clients who say, you know, maybe dad was reactive or we never knew what to expect from mom from day to day. There was eggshells, but they're so quick to follow it up with, but they were so stressed out. You know, they had X number of children or they were working multiple jobs. And while all of that is true, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there was still a, an impact on that person's psyche as the result of this covert trauma. Yeah. How do you see it? come up and, you know, if you just even gave a couple examples of how you see it still manifest in adulthood. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I want to acknowledge what you just said is so powerful because I think we struggle so much with finding that gray. It's black and white with parents and we want to view our parents in a positive light. So we just, it's hard to hold both. It's hard yeah. to hold that our parents, maybe they were doing the best that they could, and it also wasn't enough, and it also left this really negative impact on me. Yeah. So um, some specific examples, when I'm thinking about a high conflict or high tension household where there's a lot of arguments, maybe things got physical, what that can look like is a lot of hypervigilance as an adult. So all of these things I'm going to talk about, these survival strategies that you learn in childhood, they served a purpose back then, a really important purpose, and they probably did help that child to survive and to stay safe. But when the trauma doesn't get processed in a healthy way and those survival strategies carry with you into adulthood, they no longer serve us. So maybe that did help a child to be hypervigilant and to scan the room 
who's upset? Are things going to erupt? That did help to keep a child safe. But as an adult, that hypervigilance can be really distressing. Mm -hmm. So hypervigilance, another thing that can happen with that type of household is um, becoming a, pe uh, a peacemaker. So mm -hmm. constantly getting in the middle and having to put out fires and make sure this person's happy and make sure that's, that person's happy. And again, really adaptive in childhood. But right. as an adult, that can turn into people pleasing, even codependency on a, on a more extreme end of the spectrum where your needs become completely neglected because you're so hyper fixated on another person, you completely abandon and neglect yourself. So I would say that's a big one with high conflict homes with highly critical parents. So parents that aren't necessarily giving more nurturing feedback that are more mm -hmm. critical that can often show up as perfectionism and or low self-esteem, which often go hand in hand. So yeah. you learn as a child, if I achieve or if I'm perfect, then I'll receive love. And again, really adaptive in childhood, not so adaptive in adulthood. It can, there are great things to perfectionism, but there are things that keep you really stuck. Um, yeah. And so perfectionism is a big one. Um, of course, with attachment, I always look at things from a lens, lens of attachment and with primary caregivers or with parents, those are your attachment figures and you're looking to them for safety and for trust. And if they're not emotionally available or if they're emotionally inconsistent, of course, that's going to disrupt your attachment patterns into adulthood. So attachment, yeah. of course, is a big one. Right. Yeah. And, and absolutely. And then we see this as you're describing play out in the way we show up with our partners, the way we show up with our friends, our mm -hmm. colleagues, um, that we, these things that helped us survive at one point, we believe will continue to do the same. But as you're describing, actually become the demise of a lot of our relationships. They become a really destructive aspect. Um, and I think that that is such an important takeaway for people listening, like to really stop and assess that this isn't about blaming your parents. This isn't about obsessing about the past. It's about figuring out that awareness and how it's impacting mm -hmm. you present day and right. then finding healing from there. Mm -hmm. Angelica, where can people find you on websites, social media? Um, I, I mean, you do great content on socials, um, especially around this topic. Where can you be found? Thanks so much. On Instagram, I'm at therapy with Angelica and online havencounselingcollective.com slash Angelica. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I appreciate all these really helpful insights today. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you all for joining us on the Always Evolving Podcast. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, sign up for my newsletter, and find me on Instagram at Dr. Elizabeth Bedrick. This is Always Evolving with Dr. Liz.